Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Nice to see all of you here today. Our last Sunday, unfortunately, in the tent. But uh, good to see all of you here today in God's house. Today is probably the third most important festival that we celebrate Christian church year. Uh, of course, it's Christmas and Easter. Um, Christmas, we celebrate God the Father sending us our, our, our Christ child. Easter, we celebrate the Son's victory over, over death. And today, we have the festival of Pentecost, where we celebrate 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, that the Holy Spirit manifested himself in the hearts of his disciples and equipped them to be able to preach and proclaim the truth of God's word. Sorry for the mic. Uh, be able to equip them so that way they could preach and teach the truths of God's word to the world. And, and that's the same Holy Spirit who still fills our hearts, equips us to share Jesus with our friends, our family, our community. Um, we will begin our worship with opening him, O Holy Spirit, enter in. May God bless us here in his house today.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance through Jesus. Our Lord and King. Amen. The words of our consideration today are taken from the book of Numbers. You heard me read that earlier. I'm going to read one of those verses again. Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. This is God's word. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends in Christ, whenever, whenever we have a birthday, there's a few birthday traditions that hold true. Uh, the kids will come down from their, their bedrooms, their birthday morning, this one isn't set up for uh, for the birth. The, the chalkboard is changed, and it'll say "Happy Birthday," your name, your age, and that will be seated out. A list as a fan decorating that and making it look special, feel special. And at the table, the head of the table on the chair, there's balloons, uh, helium. I didn't bring any because of what happened on Ascension, so. Um, but they're, they're at the head of the table. Normally, I sit at the head of the table, but I relinquish my throne for the day for that child to make them feel special, and they can do that. And, of course, the favorite part about birthday morning is what, Maya? The donuts. Yeah, the donuts. There's some fresh donuts that are sitting in a box that, that we go out and get the night before or the morning of. Uh, now that we moved out here to Phoenix, we usually go to Bosa's. And so there's a big box of Bosa donuts. And who's up? Is they get to pick which donut that they get to eat for their birthday breakfast. And of course, it's it's served on the highly coveted happy birthday plate. That that this is gets this is where your birthday donut, your cake, this is where it goes, and that's what you do. I'm I'm sure I'm I'm sure that you all have different birthday traditions, things that you do with your house, maybe something similar, something a little different, but I would I would wager that. There's a birthday tradition that's probably universal to everybody here. And that is, of course, when, when it's somebody's birthday, we typically serve cake. And whenever you have cake, on top of the cake, of course, you have candles. candles. And, and, of course, <laughs> I don't know, he already said. I heard what she said. I heard he said, uh, frosting? Yes, there's frosting here, too. But on top of the cake, of course, candles. And what do you do? What do you do when the candles are all lit and it's your birthday? What do you do? What do you do? Blow you blow out the candles and what do you do before you blow out the candles? Make a wish. That's right. You got to make a wish. Oh. Now, as adults, I'll tell you, kiddos, as adults, we don't really take it that seriously. When you were little, oh. Wasn't that serious as all get out? I mean, think about that. Like, you knew birthday was coming up. You had it on the down. It's day, five days, four days away. And you gave it some serious thought. Did a little research. Hung out with the friends at the monkey bars. So, fellas, what do you think? What, what do you think I should ask for this year? I mean, birthday wishes only come around once a year. I don't want to waste this. Maybe you asked your older brother, older sister. I mean, after all, she's nine. She's had way more experience at this than I have. So she, she probably has some pretty good ideas. Then again, I don't want a Barbie dream house or something like that. So I don't want to mess this up. But you thought about it and you chewed on that. And, and then finally the day came. Oh, it's your birthday. You're not six anymore. You're seven. Oh, and it was a birthday party and you had your birthday dinner and the mom came out of the kitchen there it was this beautifully plastered icy sweet cake frosting so delicious you went to sugar shock just thinking about it covering this beautiful soft fluffy chocolate cake and there on top of that cake were those burning torches yeah count them make sure there's seven there better not be six on there because i'm seven and everybody sang and they filled the air with that happy Day tune, and you closed your eyes, and you crossed your fingers, 
and you gulped that big breath and you had to you got it all in one breath because if you didn't get all the candles out in one breath it didn't count and you and then you let out this exhaustive blow and you wished for well I, I can't tell you because if I tell you then it's it's not going to come true right yeah Pentecost the festival of Pentecost is is referred to as the birthday of the Holy Christian Church. 50 days after Jesus rose from the dead, the Holy Spirit came upon his disciples in a very special way. You heard it in Acts chapter 2, the second lesson for today. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly the sound of that uh, that the sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Think of that. These people were able to communicate the gospel in languages that they had never studied. And they the, the, the attitude totally changed in their heart. It wasn't a group of men who were cowering and whimpering in fear. They, they weren't sitting in that locked upper room on that first Easter that stench of sweat and fear soaking them. No, now there's courage. Now they're bold. Now they want to go out and tell anybody and everybody the wonders and works of Jesus Christ. I mean, here they are, less than two months after Jesus had been crucified and killed in that very same city, and now what are they doing? Out there openly, publicly, and preaching, proclaiming their attachment to Jesus, the wonders and works of God. I saw Jesus Christ raised from the dead. I saw him ascend into heaven. And I'm here to tell you, and I don't care, even if it cost me my life, which many of them it did, both went out with courage, and they praised and preached about Jesus. Pentecost brought about a tremendous change in the disciples. It was the start of something new. It was the birthday of the Christian church, in a sense. Well, since it's a birthday, and what, of course, do we do when there's birthdays and there's candles? What do we do? We blow them out and we make wishes. We should probably make a wish today, right? For the church. What should the church wish for today? Moses gives us a pretty good one in our lesson for today. He says this, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put His Spirit on them. When you know and understand Moses' ministry and, and everything that's led up to this point, it's pretty easy to picture him you know, exhausted and frustrated and just kind of letting this fly off of his lips. I mean, you know from your study of Scripture, through the book of Exodus and Numbers, how would you describe God's people? How would you describe the congregation to which Moses was ministering? Anybody, what would you say? Use a word to describe them. Grumbling, Grumbling complaining, Debbie Downers, negative Nancys. Sorry, Nancy, no offense. <laughs> This, this, there's this Debbie too, Debbie Downer. We got two of them, but you're both so positive. I don't. But you know, constantly griping and complaining. I mean, God frees them from slavery in Egypt with this awesome display of power. There's the ten plagues, and, and He brings them to the the the, the border of the promised land. He says, "I'm going to give this to you," and they go, "No, no, no. It, 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 the Canaanites are too big. We couldn't do that." Really? Did you just forget what God did to the empire of Egypt? I mean, he wiped out Pharaoh's army. Are you kidding me? And you're saying God can't help? No, can't do it. So they wander. And as they're wandering through the desert, what happens? They, they end up time and time again grumbling and complaining. God provides them with food and they go, no, it's not good enough. If only we stayed enslaved in Egypt where we had pots of meat. Why do we have to be, keep on eating manna and quail over and over again? And God said, worship me and worship me alone. And yet time and time again, they went to Asherah and Baal and they threw themselves in the 
arms of heathen women and they gave their hearts to false idols over and over again. Time and time again. And they complained. It was a gripe fest as they're following Moses even though he had mutiny on his, hand, on his hands time and time again. And, and finally, their complaints and their gripes, it whittles away at Moses like a woodpecker chipping at a tree. And finally, he gets so frustrated, he goes to God and he says, can you give me some help? I don't know if I can handle these people anymore. And God says, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to give a solution to this problem. God said, he said, bring me 70 of Israel's elders and I will take of the spirit that is on you and I will put that spirit on them. They will help you carry the burden of the people so that you will not have to carry it alone. So Moses does that. He brings these men before God. And, and when he did this, the Lord came down. This is what our lesson tells us. Came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the spirit that was on him and he put it on the 70 elders. Now, here's what's interesting. There were two of the elders that were listed in Moses that weren't there at the assembly. We're not told why. Eldad and Medad. For whatever reason, they weren't there. But the Spirit of God that in me, Dad, and moved them to start prophesying. And they were working. They were doing what God had enabled them to do. And when they did this, there was a young man who saw it all happen. And he ran and he told Moses, Eldad and me, Dad, are prophesying in the camp. A little tattletale. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. I wonder if when Moses said this, if he, if he really even had any kind of a thought that anything would come of what he said. You know, you think about it, as a kid, you take the wishes very, very seriously. But an adult, when you hear yourself saying, I wish, what's the circumstance? What are the situations? It's usually laced with cynicism or a complaint. I wish I had $10 million. It, it, it's this far off, far fetched concept. I'm not going to have $10 million. Like, it's never going to happen. I wish we didn't have to pull weeds. Sorry, children, you are going to have to pull weeds. That's going to happen, right? You're grumbling, complaining about the circumstances that you're in. I wish I didn't have to travel this week for work. I wish we could eat better. I wish we could have a nicer house. I wish this could happen. Usually when we say, I wish, there's not really a thought that it's actually it's a complaint or a grumbling about the circumstances. And so when Moses says this, I wish that all the people were I wish that that happened. I wonder, looking, you know, you can imagine him frustrated if he ever thought something like this was going to happen. And yet it did. His wish came true. Centuries later, you heard, Joel, uh, Joel, the prophet Joel said this. He said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even servants both my spirit in those days. Peter on Pentecost preaching this sermon to this huge crowd of people. He uses those prophecies from Joel and he says what Moses would wished, it actually had came true because the same Holy Spirit filled the 70 elders in Moses' camp. Same was the same spirit that was filling those 120 that very first Pentecost Sunday, equipping God's people to preach and teach the truths of Scripture. Paul tells us, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given, but for the common good. And on this Pentecost Sunday, what we celebrate today is that this same Holy Spirit
At some point in your life, whether it was when you were brought to the font or whether or not you and I were sitting around your kitchen table talking about the truths of Scripture, or whether or not a friend invited you to church and something in the sermon clicked, at some point in your life, the Holy Spirit came into your heart and worked faith in the Savior of all. At some point, God the Holy Spirit worked faith in you to know and believe and trust that you had God made flesh who shouldered up all your shortcomings and took upon himself all of your failures and paid for them with his precious blood. At some point, that faith was created inside of you and you were made new, a child of God. New birth. If we are born again and we celebrate that birthday, what should we do? I'd say we make a wish. I want you to take your worship folder, go to the last page of the worship folder, if you would. Take a look. The last page there. You know... I really want you to think about what would you wish for this congregation, for this body of believers? You know, what, what, would you, what would you dream about that, that this could be calm or that this congregation would be equipped to do? What do you pray? What do you take into the hands uh, of your heart and, 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 and sprinkled with the blood of Christ, give it to God and say, God, dear God, I pray for this. You, know, you want more volunteers at church? You want new visitors to come walking through our doors every day? You want you know, 500, 700, 1,000 people on a weekend? You want to start a new ministry? Do you want a, a preschool, a day school, high school? What about another, con another congregation, a second site, a third site, a fourth site? What about a, a peace in Santan Valley, a peace... Lutheran Church in Maricopa, Peace Lutheran Church in Queen Creek, a Peace Lutheran Church in Florence. Wouldn't that be kind of cool to spread out, spread? What, what is it that you, you pray that God would do? I really want you to think about that this upcoming week. Think about that today. Talk about that on the car ride home. What would you pray for? What God would be able to do? Now, I, I gave you only three blanks for the dear God because the kids just did the play Aladdin for their school play, and according to the genie, you only get three wishes. Obviously, God can do more than that, but let's try and stay focused. Try and be specific, and, 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 and really think about that. Chew on that. Do and pray, pray big, pray bold. The book of James tells us the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So write that down. Here's what I want for my peace family. Here's what I want for my congregation. Keep in mind here now that God the Holy Spirit has called you to faith inside of your hearts to be the ones who partner with God for this ministry. God in tenderly invites us to help with that. And so that's why there's three more blanks there at the bottom. There's the I will. As you think about those dreams and those, those prayers for the congregation, what will you do to make that change? What will you do to impact that? If you're saying, you know, I, I wish we had more people coming through our doors. Be specific. Be generic. Be specific. What you will do. I will go and I will invite and Janine and Bill and Bobby to come to church with me on Sunday. I will go knock on 50 doors this week and I'll go knock on 50 doors the week after that. You want more people to come in church? Be active and take part in that. I, you know what I'd really like to do? I, I'd really like to look at a second site. I'd like to look at I'll be a part of that core group. I love my peace family here in Gilbert, but I'll be a part of that core group. And let's get something else going. Let's keep going. Let's move with that. You know, I, I, I want to see this project go. I'm willing to volunteer. I'm willing to put in the time. I'm willing to do 
the research because it takes work. It does take a lot of work to do those things. So think about that. Be specific. What will you do as you do that? Don't be generic. Be specific. Be concrete and write it down. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take that sheet and I want you to stick it on your fridge. And, and when you get up in the morning to to pulling out your phone and strolling through Facebook. Before you do that, which is all great and fine, before so take a look at that sheet and pray over that. Or, or shove it in your Bible so when you sit down to have your daily devotion and you open up your Bible, as you begin your Bible study with prayer, that you pray over what you've just written out and thought about and given over to God. Or, or you stick it on your nightstand before you put your head down in the pillow. And the last thing, before you drift off to sleep and dream of chocolate cake, that you, you pray to God, God, Bring this into our congregation. Bring this into our peace family because the prayers of righteous people are powerful and effective. And you are righteous because but Jesus has made you so. Because Jesus has washed you in his blood and called you to be holy children of God. And God invites you, invites you to partner in that ministry. So may God bless us. God bless us as we walk with him through his word. May he bless us as we use the resources and the, and the treasures that he's gifted to us advantage of those opportunities because God is opening up doors, opening up opportunities for us to just that to share the preaching and proclaiming message of Jesus and him crucified and sins forgiven. May God bless us as we do that for his glory. With that, all God's people say amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we have opportunity to bring our offerings of thanks to the Lord. You can do that by going to the church website online, or some of the ushers are going to be coming down the aisle with baskets to collect a gift. Um, uh, it, we would also ask that at some point, either if you didn't fill out one of the connection cards, pull your phone out right now and scan the QR code that's there on page 9 in the worship folder just to mark your visit here with us today. So uh, please do that. Also, those of you who are joining us online, we're so glad that you're here. Please like the video, share the video with someone who could hear the peace of Jesus today, and please join us in person. We'd love to have you. May God bless us as we bring our offerings of thanks. today, we uh, join in prayer for the, the um, uh, Father Ike Mountain was called home to heaven. Uh, so we, we uh, pray for the family as they, they mourn our loss, but also celebrate Ike's great name. Uh, we also um, give thanks to those veterans who have given their lives so that way we can enjoy the blessings and freedoms this Memorial Day. So we, we give thanks to all those uh, veterans who have done that and, and also thank uh, or ask God to bless those grieving families of those who have lost someone in war. We also uh, pray that God would bless the graduates of Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary uh, who received their calls into the full-time public ministry this last, uh, this last Wednesday and Thursday. Um, my nephew-in-law was assigned to New York City to be a vicar, actually at the congregation where Ron and Ellen's son-in-law is the pastor. Uh, Sam, you might remember when, the sem when he came and preached here in January. If you remember, he, that's the guy he got assigned to New York City. I had another uh, nephew-in-law was assigned to be uh, at Luther Preparatory School, where and is a dorm supervisor, where I was before, and then also another nephew who was called to start up a church in Collinsville, Illinois, which is just outside of St. Louis. So uh, we pray for these graduates, all these graduates. We bring all these requests to God in prayer.
Lord God, you are right. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day you open your hand and provide for the needs of your children here on earth. We ask that you'd strengthen your comforting salvation in Christ. Be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our mysteries and offer to extend your healing and your hope. We ask, Lord, that you'd be with the Schrader family as they, they mourn the loss of Alyssa's stepfather, Ike. Uh, please continue to bless uh, Tori, Alyssa's mother, uh, as she mourns the loss of her husband. But may the news of Jesus' empty cross and tomb fill her with comfort and hope. May the news of the blessed re reunion and resurrection of the dead bring them healing within their hearts. We also ask, Lord, that you'd be with the families of those who have given their lives so we can enjoy the freedoms that we have in our country. Be with those who mourn the loss of loved ones who fought so bravely and yet gave their blood uh, so that way the blanket of freedom could be spread over to cover our country. Uh, bless them with the news and comfort of Jesus' resurrection and his victory over sin and death. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to equip our church with more, more pastors and teachers to go out and spread the news of, of Christ crucified and Christ risen from the dead. Be with all the graduates at Martin Luther College, Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary, who have, have taken up their field of service and labor in the ministry of the kingdom. We ask that you bless them as they faithfully teach and preach and proclaim your saving truths to the people and the field that you've called them to. Strengthen the families of our country, Lord. Give fathers and mothers a renewed sense of commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to regard their parents as your representatives. Lead all of us to love one another as you have loved us. We also bring our, our private requests to you in silent prayer. In Jesus' name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all ways give thanks, O Lord, Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus. On this day, kept his promise and poured out the Holy Spirit to empower his church to proclaim the gospel in all the world. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he 
the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Members of peace are invited to come forward to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Make your communion today.
Please stand for the closing litany and blessing. Almighty God, thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. Welcome to worship. Nice to see you here today. Uh, our last Sunday in the tent. So next week we will be back over at Basha in the auditorium. So uh, please plan according to that. I believe, uh, Jim, are we organizing something to pack up some of the stuff today? No. Uh, oh, no. I just decided to keep the tent up until after we go over there because I want to back up just in case. So we'll, we'll announce when we take it down Okay, okay, so the tent will be getting taken out after just so we make sure we get everything into Basha, everything all back there. That's all straight and, and dandy, but nothing packing up today. Okay, nothing packing up today. Um, it, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, even if you're not on setup next week, um, if, if you wouldn't mind coming a little early to, to help grab some things and give a hand just as we're getting back into the old order of doing things, just how that looks and how that feels. Um, I, I know we're, we're pretty pretty proficient at, at doing that over there, but just in case, um, more hands is always nice, and, and if not, you can always sit and drink a cup of coffee and visit with somebody if, if we get everything all cleaned up. Um, so next Sunday, back at Basha. Um, and then uh, there is a voters meeting today. We'll just do that right before we start Bible study, so I'll ring a bell for bi the start of Bible study. We have just one item on the voters meeting for today. Uh, we're hiring a consulting company, Cornerstone Ministries, to help us with our uh, capital campaign for the building fund. Um, so we, we need voter approval from that. That's the only item on the, the agenda for that meeting. So we'll just do that right before Bible study and have a, a quick vote on that. Were there any other announcements? Anything else I'm missing? Okay. 
Welcome to all our visitors. Great to see all of you here today. Uh, my mom is actually here today, so if you like me, um, you can thank her because I, I learned everything I did from her. And if you don't, well, then you can blame her because it's her fault that I am the way that I am. So uh, have a, a blessed weekend, and uh, we'll... Uh, Oh, another thing I should mention, um, we, we've been collecting money for the Bader family, and uh, Eric said that at our council meeting on Thursday that we, we raised over $7,000 for the Bader family. So that's a substantial gift of love uh, for that family. So thank you for, for prayerfully considering that and doing that. So we look forward to uh, being able to bless them in that capacity and continue to pray that Phineas heals up and, and may God bring them peace. So have a blessed week. We'll see you next week, if not before. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.